We're going to look at a multi-source use case with Zoom Data 3.7. What you see here is a dashboard that represents people who made financial contributions to a political campaign in Montgomery County, Maryland. What we see here is real data for folks who contributed to the executive race, uh, which was um, an at-large race. So you can see this is broken down uh, by zip code. If I zoom out a little bit, you see a little bit of context there. So this is Maryland, uh, this is DC. So we'll zoom in a little bit more. And what we want to do is we want to see if there's an intersection or be able to do some further analysis between an additional set of information where we overlay the people who contributed to other at-large uh, campaigns, specifically the four candidates who won seats on the county council, the four at-large candidates. So that's in a different database, and I have those represented in another dashboard for the sake of simplicity. So just for reference, I'll go in and I'll take a quick look so you can see the data source here is different than the data source that we're going to use for comparison purposes, which is over here. If I go under info, you can see they've got different names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create key sets. Now, uh, I can create two set, key sets in two different ways. I can either go within the chart itself, and when I create a key set, it's going to give me a list of all the unique identifiers for the entire chart, so representing all five bars in this case. But what I want to do is I only want to pick up each of the four uh, at-large candidates, and I want to look at them individually. So instead of one big set, I'm going to create four different little sets that we can work with. So I'm going to choose the first at-large uh, elected official. I'm going to create a key set, and it's going to create a list of all the uh, contributors who make up the, the bar here. So I'm going to say create a key set. And uh, for the sake of simplicity for the demo, I'm just going to use first names. I don't mean to be too familiar with our elected officials, but here we go, we've got Gabe, click save. I'm going to skip Andrew Friedson because he's a district candidate. I'm only looking at large. So now I'm gonna go in and choose, uh, this is uh, Evan Glass, I'll create a key set for him. And I'm using the address as my proxy for unique identifier. This is public information. Uh, the data does not come with unique identifiers for contributors. Uh, so what we did is we basically cleaned up and standardized the addresses to work as a proxy. It's not perfect because there are multiple contributors in, in quite a few cases uh, from each household, but uh, it's good enough to give us a sense of the contours. All right, so I'm going to say contributor address, and I'll click save. Now I have four key sets that I can use in um, any other analysis. So I'm going to go back. I'm looking at the executive race here. Again, these are uh, all the contributors to the executive race. I could if I want to. In fact, this is what I had done. I chose um, copy chart. And then um, just for the sake of simplicity, I got them ready ahead of time. So let me bring them up. Um, and <clears throat> they don't have the key sets applied. I just put the names in to shortcut the demo. Bring that up here. And this guy, I accidentally zoomed in with my mouse a little bit too much. Let's go back. There we go. There's Montgomery County. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. All we need to do is within the filter, I add a new filter to uh, this chart. And I'm going to use the address again as my proxy for the unique identifier. And I'm going to choose key set, and we're looking at Hans Reimer here, so I'm going to choose the key set I just created that represents the contributors to his campaign. So when I click apply, we can see the intersection between the folks who contributed to both campaigns. All right, and again, it's both campaigns because this was copied, so we see the intersection between the two. Let's do the same thing with Will Jawando. Create an add filter, choose address, key set, there's Will. I'll click apply. Um, same thing here with Evan Glass, and address, key set, there's Evan, and finally, I'll go in and add filter, address, and this is Gabe Albernoz. Okay, so this gives you a brief introduction to how you can apply key sets, how to create them quickly and how to apply them. And then now you can do everything in Zoom data on top of all this. So if I wanted to change this from a different chart type to maybe show uh, the longitude and latitude, we can see heat maps, we can change it to anything we want, we can 
look at the contributions over time using the time bar and play it back and so on. So uh, this just gives you a brief introduction to how to get your set and then everything else you can do with Zoom data is available on top of it. So I hope you enjoy this demonstration and I hope you enjoy uh, discovering new things in your data with Zoom data.